Hello, and welcome to another RPD video. In this video, we'll be talking about final impressions for RPD. Final impressions can be made using a stock tray, a custom tray, or a digital impression. Let's start with the stock tray. They are generally used to make impressions for cases with short span bounded saddles, like short span class 3s and 4s. Now let's move on to the custom tray. A custom tray can be used to make an impression of any Kennedy classification of RPD. When custom trays are made, they should extend 2 to 3 millimeters shy of the depth of the vestibule, where the edentulous segment exists. Occlusal stops should be made on tooth surfaces that are not receiving occlusal rests. At least three occlusal rests should be made to support the tray during the impression procedures. Border molding can be completed either by using PVS or green impression compound. Green stick impression compound is probably the cheapest and most forgiving of the two. Border molding is done primarily with class 1, 2, and long span class 3 and 4 cases. Short span class 3 and 4 cases do not need border molding. Now let's move on to the final technique, digital scanning. Scanners can also be used to make impressions for any Kennedy classification of RPD. However, special consideration has to be made for distal extension cases like class 1 and 2. The main reason for this is the need to extend the impression to soft tissue areas like the hamular notch and retromolar pads. Another concern is the need to capture the depth of the vestibule. It is important to note that tissues beyond the depth of the vestibule will also need to be captured. This is because when the impression is turned into casts, the deepest portion of the scanned vestibule will be the edge of the cast. Capturing tissue that is this deep can be challenging because of the movable nature of the soft tissue. We will go over the scanning technique for bounded and unbounded saddles. It's important to adequately retract the tissues to facilitate scanning the border tissues. Let's start with the bounded saddle. In these cases, we will be doing an occlusal scan followed by a 45 degree buckle scan, a buckle scan, a lingual scan, and a soft tissue scan. We will start with the occlusal scan. During the scan, the scanner is moved around the arch from the occlusal direction. The 45 degree scan is then started. The scanner is then taken across the arch. The buckle scan is then started. And as always, the scan is taken across the arch. This time, making sure to move the scanner in a vertical direction as well to capture as much vertical height of the tissue as we go around the arch. The scanner is then moved to the lingual side and the lingual scan is started and again moved around the arch. Finally, the soft tissue scan of the palate is completed by going in a zigzag or S-shaped direction. Now let's go over the technique of scanning an unbounded saddle. Because this is also a mandibular arch, a lot more scans are needed to capture the entire of the vestibule. We'll go over some of the unique movements for this scan. We'll start with an occlusal and 45 degree scan, just like we did with the maxillary arch. Once completed, we will transition to the distal surface of the distal most abutment. A mouth mirror will need to be used for the next area. The tongue can be retracted using the mouth mirror, while the buccal vestibule is being retracted using the ultra gate retractor. The scanner is then moved to the retromolar pad area, then down to the lingual pouch area. The tongue needs to be retracted heavily at this point. The scanner is then moved anteriorly towards the anterior lingual surface. It's important to try and maintain constant retraction while scanning. Here's a video capture of this area being scanned in a real patient. The lingual surface of the anterior teeth is then scanned along with the soft tissue next to it. The mirror can still be used to retract the tongue at this stage. Finally, the anterior vestibule is scanned. The optrogate should be effective at retracting the lip at this stage. After the scans are complete, the gyrulation record can be made. The advantage here is that there's no need for record bases if there's less than three occlusal stops. This feature also allows for the inspection of the clearance for rest seat preparations during the final impression stage. That's it for this video. We hope it was informative and we'll see you guys on the next video.